Hello. Hey, uh, welcome to uh, Note 7 Creative Engineering School. Uh, we're going to be talking about communication, how we talk to people, how we present our ideas, our business ideas, our inventions, anything that we're creating, either to start a business, to explain our ideas, uh, or to develop partnerships. Um, and we always start this uh, class out. You can always email us with your answers to the puzzle we ask. Uh, note7school at gmail.com. Click on our website, note7.com, and we'll help you out any way we can, and you can get all of our lessons and see some of the other stuff we've got posted, uh, music um, um, that uh, I'm working on and uh, creating, and uh, just some theories. Uh, so anyway, uh, we want it to be very interactive. And so we will start out with a puzzle or a riddle. Uh, this one is going to be one of the ones that's not mathematical. Um, but the one of the reasons we ask a riddle is uh, any good riddle, uh, these are not trick riddles. Uh, but the, if you think you would know the answer and you jump too quickly, it's not the answer. The obvious answer is never the answer. And the reason we ask it and talk about it and have fun with it is because that's what people do most of their life. They don't step back and analyze anything. So they think they've got the right answer of a decision they want to make in life. Hurry up and jump through it, and it's the wrong answer. So this whole creative class is how to step back and not jump at the first answer. In some of our puzzles, there's actually four answers where you think there's one. Some you think you've heard it before, and you jump at the answer, and there's way better answers. So they just represent of the way of thinking, so you just don't jump at the first thing and say, I know that, that's too easy. That's what, a pu that's what a puzzle or a good riddle does. It's not what you think it is. So this particular puzzle today is not mathematics. It seems much simpler than that. And in every puzzle, we have um, assumptions. And in this case, we've got a set of encyclopedias. People don't know what that is anymore now that we have Wikipedia. But that comes from encyclopedia. There used to be a thing called books. And you'd get a set of encyclopedias. Uh, Britannica was famous for them. They'd come to your door and try to sell them to you all the time. So anyway, I'm not going to draw them all out. In this case, we're going to have 26 volumes of encyclopedias. And those 26 encyclopedias are sitting on our bookshelf here. And um, each book, so these are the assumptions, each book is exactly the same. So on book A, it's a total. We're going to make it easy. Some of this stuff, you, it, you wouldn't really have this, but each of the covers is a quarter of an inch. Okay, So we have a quarter of an inch on every cover. So all the books here of all the encyclopedias are identical, um, which would never happen either. The same size, same cover, same number of pages. So the book uh, covers are a quarter of an inch. Okay, The inside, the pages, we'll say there's pages 1 through 300. Again, doesn't matter, but we have to say something. The pages are 1 through 300, uh, so this totals a half an inch. We're going to say that all the pages are 1 0.5 inches, so one and a half inches equal all the pages. Okay, the pages equal uh, one through 300. There's no context. There's no pre preface. It's just the beginning and the end. Each of the uh, covers each is a quarter of an inch thick. That's the cover. Okay, so an inch and a half plus a quarter inch plus a quarter inch. This whole book is two inches. Every book is two inches. Okay. okay, and that's it. So here's the riddle. It's this simple. We're going to call it an inchworm, but it's not an inch. So that's not even part of the trick. These are never tricks. These are real things. So we're not trying to trick anybody. This is just real stuff. You go through page one, or not through. Start at page one of volume A. Okay, so at volume A. And you go all the way to page 300. A volume B. Okay? How far does the head of that inchworm travel? So he's going to start eating at page one of volume A. 
all the way through the last page of volume B. I don't know. I'm saying it a different way so you know there's no trick. The first page, page one at volume A, the last page, page 300 of volume B, all we want to know is what is the distance that earthworm travels from nose to nose, mouth to mouth. So it has nothing to do with he's an inch. He could be 10 inches long. That has nothing to do with the puzzle. How far does he travel? And remember, if you solve it too quickly, you probably didn't understand or know the riddle because every riddle leads you down a primrose path. We want you to hurry up and give a quick answer, and it will be wrong 99.9% um, .9 of the time. So that's the riddle. I uh, hope you have fun with it. And when you get an answer, uh, shoot it over to notes. 7 school at gmail.com. Okay, now on to our personality types. So, you know, uh, a lot of us engineering and science people, uh, sometimes we have a hard time communicating, getting our idea across when it's very technical, whether it's chemistry, science, uh, um, physics, but even stuff like music. Uh, anything we have an idea for a company, how it's run, why it's unique, why it's different. Uh, sometimes, especially computer guys, uh, we have a hard time explaining um, our ideas to someone. And you have to first know your audience. So the first thing we're going to do is break down uh, what kind of personality type you're talking to. So you're talking to someone, you want to explain the idea to them. And I'm going to use uh, the idea that John Trent and Gary um, Smalley came up with, which they use animals. I love this. All the other ones are so complicated you can never remember it. So you've got a lion. They're all animals. Okay, a golden retriever. Okay, a uh, beaver. Okay, and last an otter. Otter, beaver, golden retriever, lion. And what they tried to do is pick the quintessential animal that fits this category. And like all people, there they, we have our strengths and our weaknesses. I'm not trying to put all human beings in these categories because we're all unique, all different. But again, we like to categorize things. As soon as you do, there's always a duckbill platypus that doesn't really fall into any category. So that happens. So we're not any 100% of any of these things and we're all unique. But when you're talking to someone, you're going to want to know what they are based on these attributes. So as you can probably guess, a lion is a lot of times the owner of a company. They're strong-willed. They want you to get in and out with the conversation very quick. You might have two or three sentences. They want to know the cleft notes of your idea, get to the bottom of it. They'll make a decision very quickly. They don't need any details. They'll like it or not like it. They'll make a decision. Boom. Now, I'm not, later we'll go into all the really nuances of the uh, personality types, but for today we're just talking about communicating your initial idea. So a lot of business owners are this, and so you have to talk to them quickly. But if you start from the very beginning and bore them with all the details of mathematical equations, you're going to lose them. Hey, I've got a ball. We developed it. It's encased in a plastic that is UV protected forever, and it never fails, you can have it forever, it's a great ball. That's all they want to hear. Okay, so what your idea is, you get in and out, they may have questions, they may not, they might even not even seem interested, but they could be very interested. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the beaver. Okay, and so a lot of times these are business owners in charge of a lot of stuff. The beaver is a detailed oriented person. A lot of engineers, accountants are beavers. They, they want to know everything about everything. They want to learn all what you're doing. This is the one where you are going to be free to explain in great detail what your product is about. And they will want to hear all the details and nuances. Don't bore them to death. Give them this much at first, and then they're going to ask questions. If you don't have those questions, they're going to be curious of why you didn't think of that because they're a beaver. And they think if you don't have the details worked out, it is not going to work. Strangely enough, of all the personality types, beavers are the least likely to start a business. Um, they are because they want everything to be worked out 
before they're ready to take a risk. The most uh, on, on this scale, the ones that are willing to take a risk is a lion. They don't need to know all the details. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Most likely to start a business, least likely. You would think a beaver would be a great person to start a business. No, there's no risks until everything in this box is checked. And by the way, you can have the greatest business plan ever and it can fail miserably. You can have no business plan and it'll take off. So making sense of everything isn't even always the best uh, business plan. So that's those two personalities. I'll also explain how you assess those personalities when you're talking to someone. Golden Retriever, as you might guess, is a very loyal person. They're into pers uh, relationships and people and uh, they, they are the ones that feel the greatest, the, the most. So um, very emotional. Okay, so when you're talking to a Golden Retriever, uh, they might really, if you establish some commonalities, uh, you know, where'd you go to school? Uh, where are you from? Um, what, what, what makes you tick? What do you feel? Uh, what, uh, are you a friend? Who's con so they like, uh, they will feel a connection on an emotional level and then you can describe what you're having and they're, um, they're going to be basing it a lot, maybe more on emotion, um, than they are all the technical details. Okay. Then we have the otter, and the otter is a very social person. Usually they're a salesperson, uh, so they're great at sales. Uh, they are not much into facts, otherwise you couldn't sell most things. Remember, you're selling something too. We want you to be into the facts. We want you to tell the truth. But an otter, the reason there's used car salesmen and all these guys, they have some way of bending the truth a little bit. So they're going to be a little bit leery of what you're saying just because a lot of times because they're in sales, they know things are never quite what they seem to be. But they um, love a good time. Uh, you might have to have uh, a cocktail with them or meet them at a party because they're party animals and they like people, but they are very connected. They know a lot of people. So even if you think they're not interested, they're the ones that are going to know somebody that knows somebody. So you present your idea to them, not even realizing they're the most connected to the most people out there and they can line you up. So these are great connection people. These are great technical people. These are great loyal people. And uh, these guys know how to run a company. So each one has their own attributes. And you really, if you ever put a company together, we'd like to have all of them. Um, the golden retriever is probably the second most common to start a business. And it's crazy because you would think an otter, uh, and we know a beaver isn't because they have to know everything ahead of time. But an otter isn't really because um, they go too many different directions. It's hard for to keep them focused. So a lot of times they don't start a business. So number one business owner, number two business owner, number three business owner, and dead last is the beaver. So how do you tell? Well, as you're talking to someone, uh, you quickly can find out, you know, just tell me the details, whatever. A lot of times you can even tell in their job. Uh, typically, I don't like to completely categorize, but based on uh, if they're in a technical area, how neat they keep their office. You can walk right in an office No, know, I'm not a beaver at all. My office is a disaster, so I could never be a beaver. So a beaver will have their sock drawer organized, everything organized, their pencils put in the right place. You walk in their office, boom, everything's organized. That's the telltale thing of a beaver. Lion you'll know pretty quickly too because they don't want long conversations, short conversations, keep it to the point and get the heck out of here. Okay, Golden Retriever, they want to talk about your family, uh, your friends, where are you from, so that's a thing. And then an otter, they'll talk to you for a while, but then if you're at a party, they'll start looking over your shoulder because they're going to want to go to the next guy. So you got their attention, but just for a while because they got to get on. And so that will be a quick way of assessing them. So speak their language, get to the point quickly, develop a relationship, give them the technical details, or remember these guys are the connectors. They'll get you to the right person if they're not. That's an overview, and we're going to talk in great detail about what you are, which of these categories, uh, golden, retriever, lion, beaver, otter, um, and then your strengths and weaknesses also. So that will be another class. This is really a class just to help you develop 
relationships in where you're going with your creativity and how to communicate with people. Okay, thanks again. Uh, email us. We'd love to hear from you. Note7school at gmail.com. Thank you.